This is the Scrap Metal Commodity Recycling and Economic Report by Ben Lee and Rowland Goldsboro Recycling, September 25, 2017. Last week, commodity prices and economic reports were mixed. U.S. steel production rose slightly, remaining well ahead of last year and similar to two years ago. Oil rose about a dollar a barrel to 50.56. Over 50 is positive for the oil rate count, which fell 5 to 7.44 and is on track for its first three month reduction since early 2016 due to the low prices. Iron ore fell $5 a metric ton to $62 as the trend in lower prices continues on just okay demand. Scrap ferrous prices held steady. Current good weather and the, and the recent hurricanes are bringing good amounts of material to market, so prices actually could come down a bit next month. Hot dip galvanized steel rose to $9.85 a ton, but we see downward pressure as raw materials like iron ore are reduced. Copper was no change ending at $2.95. Copper is down two cents this morning to 293. The five-year chart shows copper remains about 20 cents lower than the about three-year high of a few weeks ago. Copper inventories rose, putting slight downward pressure on those prices. Aluminum rose four cents to 97 cents, a new multi-year high on solid global demand for the lightweight metal. Aluminum inventories fell, remaining near their about 10-year lows on the continued good demand in transportation and construction. Cardboard stayed level at $175 a ton, down from the recent high, but well above last year's $80 a ton low. A couple of months ago, it was believed that the president was close to issuing a Section 232 ruling that other countries were hurting U.S. security by selling steel at unfair low prices. This was hurting the U.S. steel industry and therefore national security. Tariffs would have been ordered, helping U.S. steel companies' profits and orders. Word now is that the Trump administration wants to work on health care and taxes before the 232 ruling. U.S. building permits increased sharply 5.7% to a seasonally adjusted annualized 1.3 million in August from July's 1.2 million. We are building the same number of homes today that we were building in the 1960s, yet there are about 65% more people living in the U.S. today. Also today, we are building about half the number of homes than we were building in the early 1970s at those highs, so there's huge upside here. The architectural building index rose 1.8 to 53.7 and it has been greater than 50 for seven months in a row. With over 50 being expansion, this is a great leading indicator of non-residential construction going out 9 to 12 months into the future. The U.S. Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index accelerated to 53 from August's 52.8. While new orders slowed, backlogs increased, and the rate of employment growth was the highest in nine months. Note Hurricane Harvey actually put downward pressure on these numbers. U.S. Initial, US initial unemployment claims continued to drop after the hurricanes, with claims at 259,000 well below the expectations of 300,000. Wall Street's Dow Jones Industrial Average hit yet a new historic high during the week and ended up at 64, up 64 points for the week at 22,350. Efficiency in hauling remains important to us. Our heavy hauling 40-foot triaxle trailer that can be overweight permitted in some states is great, but it weighs 22,000 pounds. If you're running the legal limit of 80,000 in many states, our full-frame Bridgemaster tandem axle, yes, only two axles, is the winner, weighing in at only 16,500 pounds. So carry a huge 5,500 pounds more on every trip. For the record, yes, we run these tandem axle Bridgemasters in our North Carolina yards carrying 20, 30, and 40, and even 80-yard boxes. Call us for a quote. As always, feel free to call or email me with any questions, and we hope all have a safe and profitable week.